Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I want to talk about this little tiny printer right here. And this tiny little printer was sent to me by G Tech, and this is the G Tech M1. And when they first told me that they had a miniature 3D printer that they were going to be coming out with, I didn't have any other information about it. I didn't know how it looked, didn't know what kind of claims they're going to make about it, but I thought that might be interesting. So I said, sure, you get it and you send it over to me. And this is what came in the mail. And since I've been using it, I have developed some thoughts about it that I hope you stick around for. So here's the thing before I kind of like really get into it, because this is going to be a little bit ranty. Let me just go over some quick specs and I'll tell you some things that I, I, I that I do like about this. Now, first, this printer has a very small build volume, as you can imagine. They have it listed as 100 by 110 by 100 millimeters. And it also has the tiniest gold textured PEI sheet that I've ever seen. It's actually quite adorable. But something that I do like about it is that it has a nozzle cleaner as well on the very back, very similar to like the Bamboo Lab A1. And it actually does use that nozzle wiper before every print. That's nice to see. It also has a direct drive extruder. And they say that those extruder gears are also metal. Okay, so that's good. It's auto everything. It does its own auto leveling and it sets its own Z offset. I leveled it once and I haven't had any leveling problems since doing it that one time. And it's pretty much all assembled right out of the box. The only thing you have to connect is the PTFE tube into the print head and you got to put the spool holder on and you'll be good to go. So as far as, you know, getting it up and running, it's really easy. Uh, and it's got a micro SD card slot right up front. That's how you start printing. It's got a screen with it's very basic. It's not anything fancy, but it's very straightforward. You know exactly where to go. You know exactly what to do. So that's cool, I guess. And it also has its own Orca Slicer profile, at least for this latest version of Orca Slicer 2.3 something something. It has this printer in there, so you don't have to worry about importing anything. So in that regard, it's cool from that from that regard. But one of the first things that I notice about this printer is that the spool holder that it comes with, it's only good for those smaller spools, like those 250 gram spools, because otherwise, if you want to put a full size spool on there, it's not going to work because of where they decided to put the plug for the power cable. That means that the one kilogram spools is not going to be able to sit properly because it's going to run into that cable and it's going to fall off basically but fortunately they do have a file on their wiki page for a full-size spool holder that you can print on here and you can just attach it like you would the smaller spool holder and i even saw that someone created their own version of that that uses less material surprised that someone even came up with that you know for this printer it hasn't been out for that long so that's pretty cool i guess but Here's the thing, the biggest gripe that I have with this little printer is the price. They want, you ready for this? $250 for this printer. That's how much you can find it for on Amazon. You go to GTEC's website and they're asking like $210 or something like that, you know, but it's still over $200. And this printer is also being marketed as a beginner friendly kids 3D printer. I have a little bit of an issue with that because I think that the whole thought of a printer being for kids simply because it's small and you put some nice bright colors on it doesn't make it a kid 3D printer especially these days when you can get something like the Bamboo Lab A1 for around the same price. And would you consider that to be a kid 3D printer, even though it's also very small? No, I would consider that to be a good printer for anyone that's of a mature enough age or has appropriate supervision who wants to use it. So kind of getting away from this whole, oh, look, it's small, it's cute as a kid's 3D printer, even though there's nothing else on here that would be considered 
kid friendly there's no big shapes there's no built-in toys or anything like that last kids printer that i reviewed that actually does look like it's something made for kids because it, it has all the aesthetics so yeah that works but for something like this i don't think that it actually does and i got a lot more to say but let's just take a look at some of these prints right here okay so this is the first print that I made on here. And of course, it was a Benchy. It was on the micro SD card that came with it. And you can get a look at this Benchy here and you can see that it's not a bad Benchy. It's fine. It's black filament. They sent me some black filament to go along with this. And uh, this Benchy looks fine. You can see the first layer down there. It can be clearly red. No, it's pretty decent benchy i have to say you know the print quality that this printer puts out is decent you know uh it, it it it's better than i thought it was going to be um another example is i printed this this piece of miniature terrain and this is like a sarcophagus or, or something like that and you know again it looks all right and i it has some stringing, but, you know, I just left that on so that you can see it. You can easily get that off with a heat gun and you can check out the backside of this uh, sarcophagus lid. It looks pretty good. It's smooth. It, it's it's just fine. It fits right on. Everything goes down nice and smooth. The first layer on this base also looks pretty good. OK, so expectations were also like, hey, I mean, it's, it's not bad. And I haven't had any failures with this as far as uh, prints coming off of the print bed or, you know, it's been just fine. Though I did try to also print this Orca cube, Orca slicer cube. And the way that this is supposed to work is it has this and you're supposed to be able to just put this in and, you know, twist it in. It's supposed to be flush, you know, kind of like testing the tolerances and whatnot. And it doesn't completely go all the way in at first i had to work with it a little bit but after working with it i kind of like broke it in and it's kind of flush now so it wasn't in the very beginning but after working with it for a little bit it eventually found its mark and you can take a look at the cube and it looks fine and I also tried to print something bigger on here. And this is actually kind of cool. This is like a little bird whistle. And this had a lot of supports on it. The supports did not come off very clean. I used their default profile in Orca Slicer. Um, so these supports weren't the easiest thing to remove. Some of them are still on and it looks a little bit gnarly in some places. But for the places where the supports were not connected, it looks fine, you know? And check this thing out. How cool is that? You actually, you have to put water in here and then you can blow into it and then it's like a little flute. You just keep messing with this hole. And it sounds like a bird call. I really like this print. It's, it's pretty good. And that's why I have this little paper towel down here. So the things that I printed with this have come out looking decent, you know? Uh, here's something that I printed out of silk that I shouldn't have done. This is something that you put like in a jar and you can put like moss around. It's supposed to be like a little futuristic city. And uh, in trying to remove some of the supports, it broke parts of the model. I shouldn't have used silk. I should have used PLA. But, you know, this is how it still came out. And, you know, from the surfaces that did survive my my removal process were the supports. It looks fine. You know, so it's not a bad printer as far as the print quality that it puts out and it's not going to stand toe to toe with uh like a bamboo lab a1 mini or an a1 or the uh, adventure 5m is not going to look quite as good as that but considering the package that it comes in i'm like all right it's fine but like i said before the biggest problem that i have with this is i feel like it has no business being 250 dollars not in a world where those other printers that i just mentioned exist not in the world where the elegu centauri carbon is 299 and coming up the regular centauri for 199. i feel like these types of printers are kind of like a, a a part two of the Ender 3 series of printers that we saw some time ago where it seems like 
any company was coming out with like an Ender 3 clone and they looked very similar, but they were just called different things. So if you actually look up kids 3D printer on Amazon, you're going to see this printer, but then you're going to see other printers that look just like it except for little tiny changes. Like maybe the shell is a little bit different on top, or maybe their version has Wi-Fi, but this one doesn't. Or maybe their version doesn't have a nozzle cleaner in the back, but this one does. But they are all essentially, at their core, they appear to be the exact same printer with a little bit of changes here and there, and they all cost way more than they should cost. I feel like if you wanted to have a printer like this, the ideal price for something like this in this day and age, considering all the competition, the bigger, the better printers that you can get for the same amount of money, or maybe even a little bit more, or even a little bit less, this should be a $100 printer hard stop. And if you could possibly get it to be less than $100, you know, it's like, it's $90. Put it in impulse buy territory, because maybe someone could look at this and say, you know, I want to experiment with this. They have this wiki page that goes into pretty decent detail with diagrams and stuff so that you can kind of get real familiar with, with the parts and how it's made up. So I would imagine someone who likes to tinker could take something like this and go, I want to see if I can make this just a ridiculously, hilariously fast machine and I'm going to break the speed benchy record. I'm just going to tool around in there. And for an investment that's like $80, $90, sub 100 preferably, it could be a decent printer for them to toy around with. But if you look at it as being, this is going to be the first printer that you get for a beginner or that you get for a kid, I think that that is a pretty hard sell simply because there are too many options out there that give you so much more for your money. You can print PLA and TPU with this printer. The bed only goes up to 60 degrees Celsius. The hot end only goes up to 230. So for the most part, you can forget about PETG. You can, it's not going to, it could happen but you're going to need more flexibility than that if you really want it to work. And the other thing is the bed, heating up the bed takes forever on this printer. You can take, it can take like 10 to 15 minutes to get it from its regular base temperature. It might be like in here, six, seven, eight degrees Celsius. And then to get up to 55 to 60, it takes 10 to 15 minutes to get there. It's it's not a bad printer. It's just trying to punch too far above its weight class for me to consider it to be a viable alternative to what you can get right now for around the same price. And I'm not trying to be mean. You know, I'm grateful that I was able to get this and review it and tell you about it. But I just think that in 2025, I feel like there's just not really enough of a good reason to get a printer like this, this or one of the other similar ones, not necessarily because of their own merits, but because it's too much competition right now. It's just too much competition. And even if you wanted to get it as a tinkerer's toy, I still think 250 is too much. And even if you wanted to get it as like, hey, this will be fun. Let's take a little tiny printer on a road trip. We've got, you know, we're going to be staying at a campground. We got a generator. How about we print up some stuff and it'll just be kind of fun or whatever. It's small enough to take it with you. It's light enough to take it with you. It's not going to take up much space. But for $250, do you want to do all that? For $250? Maybe for $100. Even more so for 80, 90, but not for 250. So my advice for G-Tech would be this. Make the printer cheaper. 250 is way too much. And I know I keep going back to the A1 Mini, but listen, that is the printer to beat for small printers that don't cost much money. And you cannot put this next to that and say, hey, 
we're similar or the same because it's not. It's not the same. It's not. So that, it, that those are my thoughts about this print. It's kind of just been a off of the top of my head kind of a thing because, you know, I knew if this was going to be a different kind of review, mostly driven by the fact that it's it's just too much. It's too much. Gotta lower the price on something like this. And uh, this chip clip here has got a few more minutes to go. I'll show you how it looks in uh, in some B-roll here. And as I would expect, it probably turned out looking just fine, like everything else that I printed. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. So with that, I want to know, what are your thoughts on this particular printer and printers that are like this, that are marketed as being kid friendly or kid 3D printers? They have kids in the marketing materials and uh, they sell it for prices that are right up there with printers that people use in their actual print farms that make them money. Uh, so, yeah. Love to know your thoughts about that. And I do want to thank G-Tech for sending this to me so that I can check it out. Don't mean to hurt your feelings, but, you know, I got to be honest about the stuff that I get and that I review. It's not a bad printer. You just got to make it cheaper. So that's all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves. And I'll talk to you soon. And I will play you out with a tune. Link in the description to where you can find this too.